the founder and CEO of Clarify. And I'm going to walk through exactly what we do in artificial intelligence and how we cater it all to real as developers. And so I'm going to start off with some slides and then uh, show you some live demos of some stuff and then uh, come back here to see any questions that you've posted in the chat. So let me begin with the slides. Um, so Clarify essentially has artificial intelligence to understand images and video automatically. So you show just the pixels of those images and we can recognize things like tree, dog, cat, mountain, but also descriptive words like love, happiness, togetherness, etc. And so it's a very high level um, representation extracted just from those pixels. To give you a little background about the company, uh, we're built right here in New York City and uh, right off the bat, starting Clarify, I submitted the first five of these neural network models that we use neural nets across all of our technology to this annual competition called ImageNet. And the goal of ImageNet is to recognize a thousand different categories of objects within images and uh, Clarify submitted five entries and ended up winning the top five places in the competition. So it's a great way to kick off the company with the world's best image recognition, and we've been improving it ever since. And we have some great factors in terms of our investors. Uh, Manual Ventures led our Series B, Union Square Ventures here in New York led our Series A, and there's some other notable ones like Lux, Google, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm are all part of the clarified story. As you think back um, towards building something incredible for consumers, which is the goal of most developers, you can think back in the 80s when computers entered the home. This gave the opportunity to get technology into people's hands um, rather than going elsewhere. And that made them more informed. And then the internet connected them um, together across the globe and that gave them a lot more information than they previously had available. And that's been improving ever since. In the 2000s, it was really social media that took the world by storm and smartphones um, changed the way we communicate. And it's typically through these online communications these days. And then uh, computer technology with these smartphones is essential to our lives. It would be impossible to leave the house without it at this point. And so um, it's really ingrained and that gives a close connection to uh, developers and, and brands who are trying to cater towards consumers. But this next decade, we really think that AI is going to be um, the go-to method that developers can impact consumers. And so that's why we're so excited about it. And you can think about Clarify as a brain up there in the cloud, and it is, um, has learned about lots of different things in the world. So over 11,000 concepts can be recognized within Clarify's technology. And so when you send us an image, or we can recognize all the different things and associate it with what we see in uh, visual content. And again, that's all made by APIs, so that you can build whatever you want on top of this technology. And we love working with developers because they are the most creative people when it comes to building on top of technology. And uh, we've seen some of the uh, creative hacks, um, and I'll show you some of those later today. And so, one of the goals of working with developers is making it dead simple to use. This is how you make a prediction from one of our models. And so it's only four lines of code. The first two you'll see with most uh, API. You get an API client, you import it, is the first line. Then you tell us who you are, if you have an ID and secrets at this time. And then you, uh, the third line there that's uncommented, it's saying, I want to use the general model. And I'll show you what exactly what that means in a second, but we have a whole suite of different models for different use cases. So here I'm getting the general model. And then the last line is saying, I want to use that model to predict over this image. And it happens to be a URL but we support bytes as well. So if you're calling from mobile or loading a file from your desktop, you can load it and send it to us as bytes. So it's that simple to get artificial intelligence into your application. And so these models I just referred to come in all different uh, applications and different sizes actually. So we have a general model, and if you look at this background uh, picture, it might say something like drink. So this model is meant for going through consumer photos, social media photos, stock photos, the broadest sense. So if you take your phone out of your pocket and take a picture, you can use general model. It'll give you something meaningful. If you know your domain that you're working in, 
you can get finer grain classifications. And we have domain models for food, wedding, nudity, travel, and so forth. And I'll show you a bunch of those in a second. And so for this background image, we might say coffee using the food model. And then the third category is custom models. And this is really exciting, something we launched in the fall. And I'll do a deep dive on this um, as well. So here, it might say uh, Starbucks. If Starbucks approaches us and wants to recognize their brand across uh, content. Um, so to describe all these different models, we have what we call our model gallery. And it looks a little something like this. So I'm going to go there now and show you what I mean. So if you go to um, developer.terrify.com, it'll look like this. This is the landing page. And if you click on models here, you'll come to the model gallery. And so this lets you experiment with all the different offerings we have. And you can see some of them are brand new. They just were released. Some of them have been around for a while, like the general model. And if you click on any one of them, let's start with the general model, you'll get a live demo of what it, how it uh, predicts on actual images. And so we have some images ready to go for you. And the predictions you'll see on the right-hand side. So this image on the left is uploaded. And we return uh, objects like case and bag, but also descriptive words like business or fashion. If I try another image, it comes back in real time. So that's the response rate you get out of our API. It actually made an API call there. Now if I try another image, you see what I mean. And, of course, you can try your own image down here on the right. You can either upload it from your desktop or from a uh, URL. And so that's the general model. This is meant for very broad topics. Um, and I want to show you one thing with regards to the general model um, as well. If you go to demo.terrify.com, we haven't yet integrated this into the model gallery, but we also support video. So this is really exciting. It's going to upload the entire video to our platform and run the classifications throughout it. And so it just finished. And you can see down here in the bottom right, this video was 2 minutes and 50 seconds. So we finished understanding it in about 6 or 7 seconds. And these different colored lines correspond to the different colored concepts here on the right. So if I isolate the lines, let's say mountain, uh, the height of the line is also returned. It's that confidence score that you saw in the other um, visualization. It's how confident the model thinks mountain appears. And so when I click here, I'm confident that I'm going to find a mountain. And all these 11,000 different things that we recognize are independent, which means if I'm looking for snowy mountain, I can search for snow and mountain and find that part of the video where there's snowy mountains. And you can see there next to it, water becomes likely. So if I click there, I can discover that there's a lake in front of that snowy mountains. So much faster than real time, we can understand video in much more detail. And so back to the model gallery to explore some of these other types of models, let's say uh, the food model. So this is a fun one for you know any type of nutrition app or recipe book app or calorie counting. Here we're recognizing the ingredients in a plate of food. And again, you get the confidence score. It's recognizing the, the citrus fruit and the seafood on the side and so forth. I try with these burgers, it'll recognize that there's bacon inside them, and cheese, and so forth. So very detailed. This has much less categories than the uh, general model. It has about 1,000, as opposed to the 11,000, but it's all focused on food. So if you know you're building something related to food, you can leverage that. And we have a couple models, like the demographics model or the celebrity model, uh, which are geared towards face recognition. So here, it's doing something a little different. It's finding the face first and then classifying who that person is. And so, or attributes of that person. Um, and so here it's recognizing that this is Morgan Freeman with 91 or 99% confidence. Um, here you, you'll see it recognizing multiple faces and each of them is classified with a different person. And you can see it comes back in a fraction of a second. So. This one's really fun for uh, celebrity lookalikes and, and stuff like that. And we just launched, uh, just a few days ago, our demographics model, which actually gives the age, gender, and multicultural appearance of a person. And so this can be used to understand who your users are and build some really interesting apps. And uh, again, all these different scores um, are bucketed now into three different sections, the gender, the age, and the multicultural appearances. 
And then another exciting one um, that we just launched a couple days ago as well is the logo model. So just like that Starbucks um, example I showed you, this one is recognizing logos within images. And so it's going to localize them. It's going to find where they are and then classify what they are. And so here it's finding two different RDs logos and within the same picture. And so this is really exciting for brands and understanding where your products are being used. And combining these different models opens up a lot of new application areas. So this gives you a sense of the different models that we offer within our model gallery. And so one thing we realized after the last three years, we had uh, created the general model back then, about three years ago when Clarify was started. And then we started building those domain models. And for some large enterprises, we build models specifically for them. But in all the cases, the, the typical next step that people do is index these predicted concepts for search. And so last fall, we launched a, a big new product called uh, Search. And it lets you index all this stuff for um, with simplicity. And you don't have to maintain a search index. You don't have to think about how you rank search results and all that. And so I'll show you what that looks like. And Again, everything is powered by APIs, and so you can build this into your application. And I'll show you exactly what the code looks like uh, after I show you what the product looks like. And we include this user interface, which lets you manage your data. And that's really important because if you have really large data sets that you're going to be searching over, it's nice to have at a glance what that looks like and how it's organized. And so this is an example of uh, maybe a stock photography company who uploads their content. And then you can search for things like dog. And it'll find pictures of dogs automatically. And I didn't have to manually tag this content. I didn't have to think about how to rank it. We're using those confidence scores in order to rank the, the results for dog. Now, if I search for dog and grass, it's going to find a combination of the different concepts that we recognize. And again, you can see it coming back in real time. Now, we went one step further than just concept-based search. If I go into an image, you'll see this section called similar images. And this is finding visually similar content. And this is very simple to use. You just give it an image as a query instead of the concepts, and you get results back. You can even use a crop uh, tool right here in the UI to find uh, stuff that's similar to that crop of the image. And this opens up a really powerful discovery experience for your users. You can let them even take an image off the internet. Again, the image can be bytes, like that crop, or URLs, like this one. And we upload that as a query, and we find similar looking stuff. And I can combine those with concepts as well. So things that look like that picture, but also have graphs in them. And so that's what we call visual search, finding visual similarity between images. Now, if I go to a different use case, so we'd like to build a platform that has features that are useful across all different industries. And so here's uh, gardening as an example. And if I hit the little eyeball on an image, it actually uploads it to the search bar. And it's going to show the, the blue pictures. Um, and then if I upload a second image, and it can be by URL or by bytes as well, that will find uh, things that look similar to both types of images. And so it has some uh, of the blue flowers in front and the other type of flower behind. And different viewpoints, different colors, um, different zoom levels, all that kind of stuff is taken care of um, for you because we match at a very high level of understanding within the images. And so this is a new discovery tool in the gardening industry. Or if you think of obvious use case, um, and this is very similar to what Pinterest has done on their own um, website, we can now enable people to shop and discover content online. So if you index your products with Clarify, and I didn't have to say a word, it finds stuff using visual similarity. Now, if I crop out a different part of the image, it finds stuff that looks different. I move that around. And it keeps finding different types of results. So this makes it a, a fun application for developers to build on top of and integrate into their sites. And so 
that's an example of visual search. And that sounds pretty complicated to integrate, but we put a lot of effort in making our APIs simple to use. And here is the exact uh, lines of code from our Python client that lets you index things for search and perform a search. And so it's only four lines of code, just the, the same amount as making a prediction with our API. And so the first two liners are actually the same. So you import our API client, you tell us who you are with your ID and secret, and then you create an image from the URL. So this is adding that image to your collection that you want to search over. And then the last line says, I want to search by an image. So this is showing the visual search where the query is actually an image, and it will find similar looking stuff. And there's a similar call for search by tags, and then a different call to combine all those different types of searches together. So very simple to use, only four lines of code in order to get search into your products. And again, you can try all this stuff out for free. We have a free trial. You don't even need your credit card. You can sign up at developer.clarify.com. Now, when you think of a picture like this, uh, something different will pop into almost everybody's mind. Some people might think, oh, it's black and white, it's kissing, it's World War II, it's uh, New York, it's Times Square. There's lots of different concepts in the world, and everybody has a different perspective. And so we want to capture that diversity in our platform. And we know that building a diverse team makes a stronger team. We have the same view on building uh, a strong AI platform. We want the most diverse set of developers building on top of it. And so naturally, we have to get to that ability to customize the platform so that we can handle every possible use case out there in the world. And again, we have a general model, which covers a broad set of use cases, domain models, which cover more specific use cases, but custom models that you cover exactly what you care about. And so I want to talk about that. And so naturally, you have to be able to train our AI platform. And we looked at how you train AI today. And there's a bunch of roadblocks that we wanted to improve upon. Typically, you need lots of code. And you download some toolkit, like TensorFlow, for example, and it has hundreds of thousands of lines. And then you have to configure it and tune knobs and um, set up your data pipeline. And so you really need to know what you're doing. And you need a team of data scientists who have done this before in order to get maximum results. You also need special hardware. In order to train uh, artificial intelligence, you typically use graphics cards, which are originally meant for video games, but they have the same kind of operations that are really useful for neural networks. And then to recognize a new concept in images, you typically need a 1,000 examples per category that you want to recognize. And that takes a long time to collect, and it blocks a lot of use cases. And then finally, Getting all this stuff together takes weeks of time, and then hitting train takes weeks um, to update the model. And so there's a lot of roadblocks. And when we thought about the problem of getting AI into everybody's hands, we wanted to start removing those. <coughs> Excuse me. And so special hardware is not needed. You use our cloud, and we take care of optimizing everything on graphics cards. All of our processing is done on GPUs. And you don't need a team of data scientists. You don't even need to know about machine learning. As you can see in the code examples, it's very simple to use. We take care of optimizing the accuracy of the models for you and doing all the data balancing and all the fancy tricks that we have the expertise in-house to perform on these artificial intelligence models. And then we address the issue of having a 1,000 examples. We knew that if we could get down to just a few examples to learn something new, it would be learning just like a human does, and it would open up a lot of applications in, uh, for example, teaching your own pet's name. You don't have a thousand pictures of your dog, but you want to be able to recognize them going forward. So if you could train it with just a few examples, it opens up new applications. And then lots of code. Um, it's too complicated. It should be very simple. It should be as simple as getting an API client, adding some data, training the model, and then using it. If we could get that iteration down from weeks to seconds, then you'd get instant gratification, and you'd have uh, you get excited by how quickly it learns and can improve by more data that you feed into it. And so that's exactly what we introduced as custom training. And so I want to show you exactly what that looks like, um, built right into the same set of APIs and the same user interface as search. And so here are my personal pictures that I've just dumped into the search product. And of course, I can search over them. Um, 
So here, the application seems to be we've done some re-indexing of our database. So this is one of the oldest apps that we've probably dumped. Um, let me try a different example. So here is a New York Public Library. They have images like this, and they've categorized them into different uh, concepts by their professionals at the New York Public Library. And now that we've taught the system how to recognize them, we can search over those concepts. And so here, I'm recognizing watercolors, and the ones with the green checkbox are watercolor, uh, are manually labeled to be watercolor. And then the ones, as I scroll down, that are missing the checkboxes are uh, ones that our platform has recognized to be watercolors, but the humans have missed. And so if I go into this image, you'll see this new section up at the top. And this is where we're predicting all the different concepts that the model can recognize. And here it's 67% confident that it's a watercolor. And it's very simple to just teach it new things. So I can just say that's a watercolor and hit train and it'll update the model. I won't do that for now, but that creates a new uh, version of the model. So you can always go back and uh, run a previous version when, when you're happy with the performance of it so that you can uh, basically checkpoint the model at any given time. And so if we look at another concept like maps, and so one of the exciting things is that once you teach it new things by labeling data and training the model, you can immediately search over the content. And so it'll recognize, um, again, things that humans have missed. Let me try if a uh, different type of concept here. Let's see if this works. So here, if I search for document in my personal pictures, um, I go to a lot of research conferences, and so uh, I have a lot of research posters. And so let me teach it what a research poster is. So I just select a few examples. And to teach the AI, I just say whatever it is, research poster in this case. And I hit done. And so it says these 10 images have been updated. And so all I have to do to train the model is say I want to train the model. And it should be training in the background, and then it's done. So that orange dot disappeared. And now if I go into this image, you'll see research poster here with a green check indicating the manual work I've done. And here it's 98% confident that this is a research poster. I go to the next image, it's 95% confident, 96, and so forth. And so this picture, um, which is not a research poster, I can say it's not that thing. And so we take both positive and negative examples. And if I retrain the model, it'll take a few seconds, and now it's 76% less likely that this is a research poster. Now it's only 13% likely. And this is very powerful because now I can iterate on this process of teaching it new examples, doing searches to find additional examples, and continuing to improve the model. And so now it's very accurate at recognizing research posters. The whole first page is uh, actually true. And you can see I've only labeled maybe a third of that whole page. So a little bit of work can be applied to massive amounts of data. And so let me just show you exactly what that looks like when you're teaching the system through the API. And so it's six lines of code in order to train AI today. The first two are identical. You import our API client, you would tell us who you are, and then when you create images, it's the same as search, but you also tell us what concepts are present. So here, we're uploading an image from a URL and a cute dog, but there's not a cute cat. And the second image has a cute cat, but not a cute dog. And then when you go to create a model, you, have to, you can create as many models as you want, and you give it a name, and you tell us what concepts, it's a, just a list of concepts you want present in that model, that creates the model, just like you could get one of the pre-trained models, you can create a new model, and then you train it. And that's the process that takes a few seconds, and then you can use the model just like you would any other model. 
So it's very simple to use any of our different types of models, including custom ones that you can teach it on your own. So that's what we call custom training. And I'll show you some interesting applications of that. Again, join us at developer.terrify.com to get started. And then the other really cool piece of technology um, that we've launched is the ability to recognize in different languages. And so if I go to demo.terrify.com, here I'm going to go to configure at the top right, and you'll see this drop-down list where there's multiple different languages. So here I can choose Korean, for example, and get predictions back in Korean. Or I can choose simplified Chinese, we have both simplified and traditional, and I get results back in Chinese. And so this is really uh, an interesting research problem where we set out to solve this multi-language differences. And here's an example of where this um, is a challenge. On the left, you see a word crane in English, which could mean a machine that lifts things, or it could mean a species of bird. And so we have to separate out all those different meanings and build our own knowledge graph, essentially, where we know the connections between different things, and each node of that, that knowledge graph has a very clear definition. And once we had that clear definition, we could translate it into the other different languages. And one of the side effects on the image in the right, you might get uh, return values that say fall multiple times. And that's because one of them has the meaning of the time of year, and the other is the leaves are falling down to the ground. And so you, you have these kind of unique side effects that are uh, pretty exciting in our platform. And you get a concept ID, which lets you um, map your, the concepts that clarify predicts into whatever vocabulary you care about um, in your product. And so developer.clarify.com, um, very simple to use with quick start guides for everything you've seen here, um, more in-depth guide to getting into the, the advanced usages, and then API references for the different languages that we support. Uh, and those are JavaScript, Python, Java for Android, and iOS um, with Objective-C. So um, you can get up and running very quickly with our API clients, and then we have a whole suite of community-provided clients um, as well. And so let's see what people are building. Um, so we have large enterprises like Style and Pretty using our wedding model to organize the user's uploaded wedding album so that people can come to Sound and Pretty and do searches and find inspirations for their weddings. And so this was uh, using our domain model that has about 450 categories. And that helped them get more than an order of magnitude more content onto their site. And uh, that ultimately leads to more ad dollars. Um, Travago is a customer. They have 10 million plus hotel listings across the globe. They're using our travel model, which recognizes things like ocean view and pool and so forth. And, uh, from the, the user uploaded photos so that maybe the next time you're planning your vacation, you can compare those photos directly. We've been working with medical companies, like I had said, who has this new device that looks inside your ear, and doctors have been labeling on their cell phones with the device the 10 different diseases they're looking for that created a training set that um, then a custom model and clarify could be formed from, and they're claiming over 99% accuracy in the real world using our technology. Uh, marketplaces use us for both organization of content, but also moderation. So they have a lot of offensive things like drugs and weapons and pornography that we can help filter out. And we have a nudity model to do that, and we're working on generalizing that um, very soon. And then large brands they can leverage the custom training to uh, describe how their marketing team can base their brand and what they look for on social media. So maybe they can find examples that uh, real world customers are creating that convey their brand, but they can include that in their next marketing campaign. With the logos, it's very powerful because now all these, and the celebrity model, combining these different things makes it really exciting for sporting events. As one example, you can find you know, the Nike swoosh on multiple places here and the celebrity uh, athlete. You can also enable things like smart advertising. So this is something uh, McCann did, where they took pictures uh, on the web, like this one, and they can recognize that it's the winter time, it's a home, and so the advertisement on the right-hand side is for a heater yeah, to uh, to put into your home, so that it. Uh, uh, so this is kind of a contextual advertising. And then developers have built some really incredible stuff. This was at one hackathon. 
where um, they took social media pictures of baseball-related photos, and they trained the classifiers to recognize when a ball was being caught. And then they could um, look at the GPS coordinates of all the pictures where balls were being caught, and they overlaid it onto the stadium map to show you where the best place to sit is if you want to catch a baseball. So really clever stuff out of the developing community. Another team at a hackathon backdoored the Tinder app and had one of their developers swipe left and right according to their preferences. That created training data to learn how they uh, preferred things. And then they could automate Tinder. And they found about three matches in the hackathon. So again, custom training coming in. And then Baby Monitor, I can show you this one um, live. So this is a Raspberry Pi camera that one of our engineers set up to look at this newborn baby's crib and, can, and has trained it to recognize things like the baby is standing. And so this should find uh, the uh, baby different times of day, different poses, different colors. Uh, baby is sleeping, different orientations. Um, the baby is sitting, playing with different toys. And the baby is missing. So now he has the most intelligent baby monitor, and it costs about $40 with a Raspberry Pi. And so um, you can join us at developer.clarify.com to sign up now and join the suite of uh, companies like this who are using us every day to build intelligent artificial intelligence into their products. Um, so.